Good afternoon. Um, I just had a good meeting with uh, President uh, Biden. We uh, discussed the uh, upcoming NATO summit here in Washington next month, where we will uh, celebrate uh, the 75th anniversary of the most successful alliance in history, NATO, but also where we take uh, important decisions for the future, uh, not least uh, on defense spending. And I shared with uh, the president uh, the new numbers we have, showing that uh, this year 23 allies will spend uh, 2% of GDP or more on defense, uh, which is uh, twice as much as uh, just uh, four years ago. And it demonstrates that uh, more and more allies are now really stepping up and investing more in our security. Um, we will also make important decisions on uh, Ukraine. I expect uh, NATO to take a lead role in providing uh, security assistance and uh, training, and also that allies will um, uh, commit uh, more military and financial support uh, to uh, Ukraine. Uh, so I look forward to return uh, to Washington uh, to, um, uh, to attend the NATO summit um, and uh, to celebrate uh, NATO here in Washington, D.C. next month. Ukrainian robust package we'll that will be announced next month. Any details about the package? Can you speak up a bit? Yes, uh, the uh, robust package on Ukraine you announced actually in Prague uh, two weeks ago. Can you speak more details about that? What do you expect from Washington next month? Well, I expect that uh, when uh, the heads of state and government convene here in Washington next uh, month, um, in actually a few weeks' time, uh, we will agree that NATO will uh, take on a lead role in providing security assistance and uh, training. Um, uh, uh, I expect that this uh, will be uh, uh, led uh, by a three-star general. Uh, it will be uh, to provide the, the logistics, uh, the, uh, the support uh, to set up the capabilities that Ukraine needs. Um, it, uh, it will most likely be located in uh, Wiesbaden, Germany, at the U.S. facility there. And it will be several hundred personnel uh, to organize and facilitate the security assistance for, uh, for uh, Ukraine. This is important because it will uh, provide more predictability, um, more accountability when it comes to our support to Ukraine. Uh, and it will also reduce, reduce the burden on the United States. Uh, I welcome, of course, the decision by the U.S. Congress uh, to allocate 60 billion extra U.S. dollars for Ukraine. Uh, but I also welcome the fact that actually European allies and Canada are matching what the U.S. is doing. And by uh, giving NATO a bigger role, uh, we will ensure that uh, the burden of the United States is reduced and that we have more long-term support for Ukraine. Is there any concern that um, using the funding from... Russia's funding, as well as expanding into allowing weapons to go into the country, um, is there any concern that that is pushing Russia to do things that they probably normally wouldn't do? And what's the response to the the request for peace from from Russia itself? So first of all, I welcome the decision by uh, the G7 countries, uh, the NATO allies, to uh, use the demobilized Russian funds uh, to finance a loan uh, to Ukraine uh, to help them to get more financial support uh, from, uh, uh, from uh, the West uh, to ensure that they can stand up against the Russian uh, aggression. Uh, second, I welcome the uh, peace summit that uh, took place in Switzerland over the weekend. Uh, this demonstrates that there's broad international support for Ukraine. Um, but we also know that what happens around the negotiating table is inextricably linked to the situation on the battlefield. And uh, as long as uh, President Putin believes that he can win on the battlefield, that he can uh, wait us out, there will be no lasting and just peace in Ukraine. So if you want a peace in Ukraine, the best way of achieving that is to strengthen uh, Ukraine's military capabilities uh, so they can negotiate uh, from position of strength and ensure that Ukraine prevails and, uh, and survives as a sovereign independent nation in the uh, in Europe. It has not been rejected. So what has been... The, the offer from Russia. Well, Russia has not really put forward an offer. Uh, uh, President Putin said that the precondition for a ceasefire is that uh, Ukraine should give up even more land 
should give up all the four provinces that uh, Russia has uh, uh, annexed without controlling. So not only should Ukraine give up the land that uh, Russia is controlling today, but, uh, but Ukraine should also give up uh, land that Russia is not controlling today. Uh, and that was a precondition for a ceasefire. This is, this is not a peace offer. This is uh, uh, a proposal uh, uh, that uh, Russia should actually achieve its war uh, aims by, uh, uh, convince, uh, by, 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 by convincing Ukraine to give up its sovereignty and territorial integrity. Secretary General, can you clarify your comments on the deployment of nuclear weapons, NATO nuclear weapons, and how wouldn't it not be perceived as an escalation by the Russians? Well, NATO has had for decades a nuclear deterrent, um, and uh, uh, that's nothing new. Um, it's uh, uh, not uh, new either that uh, we are modernizing this nuclear deterrent. Uh, with uh, uh, replacing, we're replacing um, old planes, aircraft, uh, legacy aircraft, uh, with a new modern fifth generation aircraft, and the U.S. is uh, modernizing the weapons they have deployed. So this is nothing new. This is this is uh, uh, a modernization of NATO's nuclear deterrent, which has been going on for some time, and uh, uh, we have been transparent about that, and it has been communicated for many years them out more? No, there are no plans to increase the number of weapons. What we are doing is that we are replacing the planes, uh, the legacy planes, with uh, new modern fifth generation aircraft, and the U.S. is modernizing the, uh, the weapons. So this is, this is, this is a modernization of uh, uh, the nuclear deterrent we have had for many years. Uh, it's nothing new, and uh, it's something we have communicated over a long uh, uh, time.